State Minister of Investment Promotion Kehli Rambukwela said he will review the foreign investments claimed to have been attracted by the former government. When news first inquired about this matter, the state minister said despite claims of having received such FDIs, the former government had not actually received them. One of the most anticipated foreign investments was the Volkswagen car assembling facility. But this was nothing but a lie. Then they claimed of another foreign investment, an oil refinery project worth 23 million US dollars. We are currently reviewing this matter. From what we see, none of these had taken place in the proper manner. The state minister further said, from now onwards, foreign investors will not be eligible to obtain loans from local banks. We don't expect foreign investors to invest 10% of their total investments in Sri Lanka and to take the rest from our country. This was what happened in local banks during the past. When a foreigner obtains a loan from a local bank, it is our money they take. They take our money and pay management fees. So we do not want foreign investors to take our money. They take our money, recover their 10% investment, takes another 10% of profits and then leaves the country. So if we are to take a decision in this regard, we will not allow foreign investors to obtain loans from local banks. If foreign investors are to invest in Sri Lanka, they must bring in the total investment from another country. As far as I know, there are several institutions that obtain loans from Sri Lanka at 10%. They generate a profit of 10% and then divest to another country without anyone's knowledge. Employees of such companies are abandoned and the companies are acquired by the banks. We have monitored this situation well. We hope to formulate regulations in this regard. The situation pointed out today by State Minister Kehli Rambukwella was highlighted by News First during several previous instances. One of the many incidents include the non-repayment of loans worth billions obtained from state banks by MTD Walkers PLC. Ultimately, MTD Walkers PLC filed for bankruptcy and at one point, the company's shares at the Colombo Stock Exchange were to be sold. In addition, News First reported on the non-performing loans obtained from the state banks. WM Mendes and Company Limited, a subsidiary of Perpetual Treasuries Limited, implicated in the central bank bond scam, has a total debt of 2,912 billion rupees payable to state banks. It was revealed in June last year, state banks had suffered bad debt of more than 5 billion rupees. We revealed on the 24th of June this year that state banks reported a total bad debt of 31,459 billion rupees from those who had obtained a loan worth over 5 million rupees. When one analyzes the list of names of those who have been granted loans in the recent past, it could be observed that it is not without political patronage. Though they claimed the oil refinery project in Hamantota was a foreign direct investment, News First pointed out this was not the case even before the foundation stone for the project was laid. While we must take steps to prevent such irregularities from taking place, steps should also be taken to punish those who permitted and facilitated the process for foreign companies, friends and political confidants to exploit and waste public money. 